All right. I am so excited to have my buddy, Sarah Watts, talk to us about juxtaposition. So when we're talking about juxtaposition, I feel like we need to define it first, Sarah. Can you do that for us? Go for it. Yeah. Two things that wouldn't normally go together are working in harmony. I like it. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk to you because I love talking to you. Actually, I was just like, we can, we, you can pick whatever you want. Cause like we can talk about anything, but I do see a lot of juxtaposition in your work. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about first, like subject matter. You will pull some maybe darker themes of subject matter and just mash them up with cotton candy. Is that a fair <laughs> description? Yeah. A hundred percent. I feel like, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is just to draw like I have a side to me that likes you know like novelty creepy stuff and then there's a side of me that likes really fluffy adorable stuff so um yeah and it's actually like a dueling battle in my head all the time just like trying to figure out how to let those two things live together in the same space and but that's how we have to do life right like you kind of have to hold space for both hardships and happy ships, happy ships. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like you, yeah, you just like gravitate towards that tension probably because that's part of your personality. Like maybe does it feel truer to have both like on the same page? Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, it is. Um, I think that a lot of it is, uh, how I was raised. I, I had a very, um, you could say adventurous and difficult upbringing. Um, And I think that part of what got us all through everything, uh, because my, uh, my dad had a mental or has a mental disorder that was very, um, you know, up and down. It's that's called schizoaffective disorder. But basically, we had to hold space for those kind of uh, ups and downs, and then also have that feeling of hope and excitement to kind of get us through. So that dueling, uh, energy has never left me. I've always had like a, a side of me that kind of likes to be by myself and kind of not talk to anybody. And, you know, and then there's a side of me that's like very outgoing and loves to talk to everybody. So I think visually that comes out with like my fascination with Halloween and like, I like metal music and, and then there's a side of me that likes you know, Taylor Swift and fluffy animals. <laughs> so, well, how do yeah. you bring those together? That sounds so hard for someone who doesn't <laughs> usually do that, right? Like, hey, let's do a skull and some beautiful flowers and then <laughs> Taylor Swift. I don't know. Like how, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that not letting yourself feel like you have to be one or the other of anything is probably the best freedom. Like I, I think, uh, when I started my path for illustration, I was like, just kind of, you know, trying to find my style and figuring out how like, or my voice and really what came out was just that I like have multiple interests. I like things that are romantic. I like things that are, um, you know, like creepy or dark, like Halloween kind of stuff. And then the fluffy things. And so putting them all together Mm -hmm. is the fun tension that challenges me as an artist. Uh, I think that if I didn't, like, I do like to do each of them individually, obviously that's, there's a place and time for that, but there's something about pulling all of those um, aspects together that feels very challenging and fun. And it feels more true to me. It feels comfortable to kind of deal with that chaos of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, you know what I, in, in your work, I don't just see it in what you do, like the subject matter that you choose, but I also see it in the contrast. It's like, you have a metaphorical contrast and a visual contrast, right? So yeah. I think that that's one of your tools that you really bring in a lot of light and dark and it's like a graphic bold way of approaching juxtaposition yeah yeah oh, I love you Amarillo <laughs> I know I've I've been studying your work I, <laughs> well, I know your work too my friend <laughs> <laughs> and 
I have another one for you. Okay. What? <laughs> um, okay. So I noticed too, that mm -hmm. you will change mediums. Now, <gasps> don't you think that that implies some of that tension? Like let's explore this now. And you're bringing it into what you're already creating. Yes. A hundred percent. I, I feel like uh, medium is actually one of the things that can define your style like the most. It, it, I think it's one of those pressures that artists have of like, I have to stick with one thing because I need to look the same and consistent so that I can get work. And there is a big truth to that niche audience um, lesson that we've all learned as an artist. Like, you know, you need to kind of focus in on a very specific audience because uh, you know, it'll help your work stand out more because people are looking for specific things now because we have so much available. Um, so anyway, I think uh, being able to draw for that niche comes with having a similar look and having a certain medium that you use all the time can really define that. Uh, so I actually like I'm always battling between ink and, um, you know, procreate and Photoshop. I use Photoshop for the end of everything, which I'm sure you do too, don't you, Amaryllis? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, but the beginning stages where you're kind of exploring and creating and, and having that more loose uh, exploration phase, I feel like I just battle and struggle with it. I'm like, okay, I don't know if I want to make this an ink or marker or watercolor or procreate or right into Photoshop. And so I think that that challenge is fun to me. Um, and it's very frustrating sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like literally the, the, the dueling battle of just getting the medium to work sometimes is a whole thing, but yeah, I think my comfort zone is definitely just pen and ink. And then I bring it into Photoshop. So if I ever don't know what to do, I just stick with that. <laughs> so yeah, when you are creating in your sketchbook, you create with, should we try to like list them off? Go yeah. ahead. Tell me what all the mediums you use. Go ahead. Just try. Yeah. Ink and watercolor and all these different kinds of markers, like I, these Koi um, coloring brush pens and Tombow markers. Uh, and then I like to use the, the Pentel pocket brush. Um, this one might be the feud one. Uh, anyway, I like all these like brush pens. And then with watercolors, I like the ones that you got me. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, the Ray Martins. Yes, those were amazing. Um, and then, then, yeah, so uh, collage is another one that I really love. I love working with collage or like finding things and drawing on top of them and then pasting them into my sketchbook. Um, so yeah, just lots of different play, play things. I wish I had more time for sketchbooking. I do draw every day, but I feel like just a little more time to play around with mediums would be fun. I know it was hard for me to start this call because I was painting and I think you were saying you were sketching too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were both like waiting for each other to log on and like doing something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you like colored pencils. That's one. That yes, I do. Um, yeah. Erasable ones. You've talked about that. The color race from uh, Prismacolor is amazing because you can draw and then erase it like a regular pencil. But if if your watercolor happens to, uh, like if you can't pull up all of the, the, the color out of the color pencil, then it's okay. Cause it's like the color of your watercolor that you're using. So it's like a good way to hide the sketch. Yeah. And so we just went through a litany of traditional art supplies, <laughs> but then the digital arm too, mm -hmm. Photoshop and iPad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mostly, I actually have put Procreate down for like three months because I feel like I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of a Procreate burnout online. Like I feel like a little bit like I've got to find different brushes or something. I feel like it's almost like uh, a lot of of the work can feel similar because of the same brushes we're all using and stuff. So I think I need to switch it up a little bit because I'm getting too comfortable in Procreate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think like the moral of the story is you don't want to feel too comfortable. Like you <laughs> like, <laughs> you like feeling a little uncomfortable and then you're like, let's bring this person in or not person, but this buddy in that doesn't really jive with this one and let's make them be friends. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Yes. I think that when things are too quiet, I feel like something's going to go wrong. So, um, okay. <laughs> yep. we should fight more often. Cool. Yeah, I got it. for sure. Noted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right. there's something about that, that chaos. That's kind of, it just, it's that little bit of a drive that keeps me going. It's like, oh, things feel a little bit, whoa. <laughs> a little jazzy. Yeah. Can we go dancing together? I Let's think do can. it. Let's dance on roller skates. And yeah. um, actually I'm not, I can only just skate. You, I think you can do like some cool things, but let's a little just, bit of jam skating, but not, I'm not the best at it. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh well, you're kind of a chameleon, but at the same time you have a very distinct style. So that's the last thing that I'm going to ask you about, because we've like talked about how you can do all these things. And yet you've also mentioned sticking to a thing. So mm -hmm. is there like an order to that? Or like, how do you make things cohesive if you're just exploring and curious all the time? Yeah. Yeah. I think that there is the artist side of you that wants to just make things and have fun. And then there's the business art side that kind of just has to make the stuff that people want to buy that has kind of turned into your, you know, public, uh, style or voice or whatever. Um, and some people like to do, um, lots of different styles with their finished work. And then just that can totally work if you're either selling outright and it doesn't matter if your name's on it or not, or if you're, um, you know, licensing and you just have different sub brands for each style. So I think that can totally work. Um, for me, it's been that I, love working in pen and ink so much and bringing it into Photoshop so much that that's just been, that's my default look for professional work. So uh, I explore and play a lot in my sketchbook. And sometimes I'll bring some of the things that I discover into my finished work. But for the most part, the finished work is like, you know, Photoshop and ink. So I just kind of generally stick in that, that uh, zone of medium. I think line, line, uh, line drawings is part of, you can really define your style by so many different things, but I think sometimes it's like, whether you outline or make shapes for things, that's like, uh, you know, you can translate that from different mediums, uh, the way that you do your strokes and, uh, what you draw on. And for me, the, the drawing with pen and ink on like textured paper has just been the one that I love so much that I can keep doing it over and over again. Uh, yeah, it's a long answer. <laughs> I, I think, I think like you mentioned two threads, which would be your pen and ink, which really it's when I think of pen and ink though, I think of like the scratchy nibs against the paper, but you're thinking oh, yeah. more like a marker, right? Yeah. I should, I should call it brush with ink. <laughs> brush marker, brush. Ink. Yeah. Brush pens. Yeah. I use a lot of brush pens, like these little, uh, this one though is like not drying. So I'm going to have to get a different one, but <laughs> they all have a different personality. Yeah. But like, you should dry by now. <laughs> yeah. That's annoying. Um, I think that though, like the, the thing that kind of carries everything through is your sketchbook practice. So Sarah has a membership called the sketchbook squad. If you want to look into it, I'm going to put the links below. Thank you, Sarah, for showing up and telling us <laughs> all about your magic your magic. We, we need to <laughs> classic together again. That was fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Exploring your style is a huge endeavor, which is why in Watercolor Bold, we are going through it from A to Z. J is for juxtaposition with a continual stream of lessons to keep you inspired. And check out here on YouTube, the other artists in this series from A to Z, Exploring Style.